All right, Margo, thank you. Legal trouble for Justin Timberlake, the former boy band member, pop star, actor, arrested over the weekend, accused of drunk driving. Lori Tucker brought in WATE legal analyst Greg Isaacs for some insight into the case. We are talking about Justin Timberlake's arrest for driving while intoxicated during a night out in the Hamptons. Greg Isaacs is here to talk about it. It's always good to see you. Lori, well, it's good to be here. Let's go over what happened. Timberlake pulled over after officers saw his BMW. You see it there. Uh, but later, it failed to stop at a stop sign, stay in the lane, and swerve at least twice. So, Greg, officers indicated he had every sign of driving while intoxicated. Well, now... Justin Timberlake, as all of us, are presumed innocent, um, as you know. Interesting in looking at the warrant, uh, nothing jumps out. It's the same language you see in every DUI arrest throughout the country. I think when you uh, get your, your, your badge and you're allowed to make DUI arrest, it says uh, the defendant had bloodshot eyes, watery eyes, slurred speech, and a strong odor of alcohol. Uh, to me, that's evidence of, of nothing other than uh, here we go again, someone's been stopped. Uh, interestingly, uh, probable cause seems to have been uh, sufficient to, to stop Justin. Uh, he rolled through a stop sign uh, and then kind of weaved a little bit. Uh, so it was interesting. But, but here's where the case uh, could turn one way or the other, uh, as in Tennessee. He was asked if he would consent to a breath or a blood test. Was it smart that he said no, good or bad? Well, I think any time you relinquish your Fourth Amendment right uh, to your body, to your person, to your car, it typically is not a wise decision in ways that can be unforeseen. Uh, so I, I think it was smart uh, because you, if you're, if you're about to be arrested under arrest, it's not your job to provide evidence. So, you know, Justin made a statement that he had one martini, uh, so you don't know how that alcohol will be metabolized. Uh, but interesting. Yeah, it but, is interesting. What kind of punishment can he face? Well, let's, let's use Tennessee, for, for example. Uh, DUI and our law is getting ready to change. Uh, as we sit here today, 48 hours in jail, uh, loss of license for a year, mandatory alcohol and drug assessment, DUI school, victim impact panel, uh, litter pickup is discretionary. But here's, here's the kicker that's getting ready to change. As of uh, July 1st, the enhanced or super DUI level drum, drum, drops from 0.20 to 0.15. Wow, that now, is significant. Now, now remember, the legal limit under Tennessee, as in most states, because it's tied to highway funding, mm -hmm. is 0 0.08. So remember, wow. it, it's not against the law. It, it, it's not required to, to drive a vehicle while you're so-called drunk, mm -hmm. it's simply that you're under the influence. But here's how this drop from 0.20 to 0.15 is going to impact Tennesseans. Uh, this was a push or an initiative by the TBI. Now this seven-day requirement, not two days, mm -hmm. seven days a whole week. will apply to basically 80% of all arrests. The whole idea here, a deterrent to save lives. Nationally, every day, 36 people die by drunk drivers. Mm -hmm. Every 39 minutes, someone's killed. Tennessee ranks 12th in the nation. Please don't drink and drive. Absolutely. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.